Hello, I'm Kartik here from grade 8 and today I'm going to be reading Furious, Furious Jones by Tim Cahill. Good evening and welcome, said the man on stage. My name is Richard Olson and I am the executive director for the New York Public Library. As always, I'd like to thank all of my friends of the library for your continued support. But I know you're not here to listen to me talk all night, so let's get right to it. We're here tonight to celebrate the forthcoming sixth book in the Carson Kid series by one and only Robert Jones. The audience erupted into applause. Kid is the rough and tumble CIA assassin that has thrilled, captivated us and on more than one occasion for me personally robbed us of preci precious sleep as we lay awake turning pages. Kid is tough, Olsen said with a laugh. No doubt about it, but he's also fair. He seems to have a strong sense of right and wrong, time after time and book after book. He stands up for those who have never been wronged. And in this patented way, he believes in rightening wrongs and whatever force is necessary. Nicard laughed and applauded politely. Now I've had the good fortune to know Mr. Robert Jones for several years. The speaker continued, and with the possible exception of the violence, I think Robert shares many of his lead character's traits. I witnessed Robert help those around him. I witnessed Robert right the wrongs and stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves. And Robert has been a constant supporter of the library and many literacy programs not just here in New York but across the, this great country. The audience gives another round of polite applause. Olsen continued and now with further ado please wel welcome Mr. Robert Jones. The applause grew even louder and the audience stood as my dad entered the spotlight and crossed the stage to the podium, waving to the crowd. He was about 15 feet from me now. We hadn't seen, this, uh, uh, seen each other this close in seven months, not since I stood next to him at my mom's funeral. He looked tired and older than I remembered him. He had deep lines under his eyes and his hair seemed thinner and lighter. He looked like he had aged 10 years in seven months. Could my mom's death have taken that big of a toll? He certainly had not been himself since her murder. He'd called me every day after the funeral and he had sounded different, paranoid. He kept asking me about my safety. Was grandpa taking me to school every day? Did he have a police officer stay at the school? Had I received any strange phone calls or messages? He kept reminding me not to talk to strangers like I was five years old. I don't know who was worse, my dad or my grandpa. My mother's mother must have taken a toll on both of them. Well, all of us, I guess. My dad motioned for everyone to sit down. He still hadn't noticed me in the front room. The room was dark and the spotlight was shining bright in his eyes. Maybe he couldn't see me at all. I would get away with this after all. The room quieted and we sat. Thank you. It's wonderful to see so many of you there tonight. And I'd like to thank Richard and the friends of the library for having me here today. As I look around this room, my dad said, scanning the crowd and see so many familiar faces. It's hard to believe we've been doing this for over. My dad froze as our eyes met. The smile drained from his face. Ah, he continued. It's uh, hard to be believe I've been writing these books for over six years now. He, be he stopped and again just stared at me. I had never seen this expression before, but he didn't look happy to see me. The crowd started to look in my direction and then my dad locked eyes with Attorney General Como. He stared at Como and Como stared back. Then Como gave my dad a little wave. My dad looked away. And in another six years, I hope to be doing this still. I think Carson has a lot of adventures left in him. He paused again. He looked over at me again and then he looked down at the podium. He said nothing. 30 seconds passed. A minute passed. A murmur started to grow from the crowd, but he just kept staring at the podium. I had never seen him like this. He looked broken, sad, scared. My dad was never scared. Was this because of me? What should I do? Should I get up and go? Would he follow me? Could he? He had a room full of people here to see him. Maybe I could get over back to my grandpa's house before he called. I could explain it all to my grandpa and apologize. He would see that I was okay and I promised to never do it again. 
I was just about to stand up when he looked forward and continued talking. Kid's newest adventure has its root in Chicago. He finally spoke and my definition. Chicago stinks. In the language of the Potawatomi Indian tribe, the word Chicago literally means wild and smelly onion. The Alankuin tribe, the word Chicago means smell bad. The one thing historians and color scholars are unclear about, however, is whether those early dwellers were referring to wild leeks that were abandoned, uh, abandoned along the river, or if it was early social commentary describing corrupt Chicago politics and the infestation of the Sicilian Mafia. The crowd started to laugh, and I stood up and walked toward the aisle. The new book opens in a small Illinois town, my dad said. Then he let out a large sigh, and I've got to tell you, this is far and away my darkest, most twisted book today. I mean, there's truly some st sick stuff happening in this small town, and Carson meets his match in this book. I think the readers will be su surprised. He paused as I started walking up to the main aisle. I could feel people turning to look at me now. I tried not to make eye contact with any of them. Oh, my dad muttered. Carson discovers that. He paused again. Let's just say sometimes it is hard to tell your enemies from your friend. I stopped in the darkness. That was odd. That was almost identical to the thing Attorney General Como had said. I turned back my back towards my dad when bang, bang, bang. So I would really recommend this book to all of you guys if you like action thrillers or murder mysteries. It's full of uh, different kinds of smart humor and uh, mystery. It's really just really mysterious. It's about basically a kid uh, whose parents recently died and uh, he's trying to investigate their murder. I would really recommend this as it's a room just a really nice way to pass your time and if you're interested in smart humor and other mysteries and stuff like that. Thank you.